Hey y'all, it's Jeremy. Ash and I just wanted to throw something out for you guys. Uh, we're putting in a new segment starting on Mondays called Military Mondays. They're going to be a segment that just answers and deals with questions that you've got about the military. And it's going to cover a broad spectrum of military topics. Anything that you feel like asking us doesn't have to be it's necessarily about the Air Force. It could be about the military in general. Just feel free to ask those questions. Questions that deal with military, military life, military family life, military life as a couple. Anything that you can put around military. Any other adjectives that you can put around military. That's what we're going to cover. And so it's all going to be based on you. And we hope to have good feedback from you for that so we can make it exactly what you want it. Um, we're going to try to put each one of those out on Monday because Military Monday has a much cooler and sweeter ring than mm, Military Tuesday or Military Thursday. So we like alliteration in this family. So we're going to keep it on Mondays. And again, that's just going to be for you guys. Just feel free to put any question down, okay? If you want to know about it, chances are somebody else wants to know about it. So just put it down, send it our way. We'll work on getting those questions answered for you. So. Alright, today I'm going to talk about the ASVAB. For you getting ready to come into the military that don't know what it is, I'll cover that and I'll give you my experience. And one thing you need to start working on are your acronyms. So this is an acronym you can start working on right now. ASVAB, Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It's a test that has hard questions and easy questions, and the hard questions are worth more points, and the easy questions aren't. There's no real penalty for not answering questions. Just understand that the harder questions are worth more, easier questions are not. So which one do you want to try to answer more of? Just throwing that out there. There is no failing grade for the ASVAB, but you can fail to meet the minimum requirements to enter the services. ASVAB, this ASVAB thing, what is it used for? Well, used for a couple things. One, it gives the military like an assessment of where you stand aptitude-wise. And secondly, they use that to match up what you, your current level, your current aptitude level, to a job qualification. You have to have a score of this to do this job, or you have to have this subsection be a certain percentage before you can go to this job. And also, it, it tells them how easy it is going to be to train you to do whatever job it is. So there's two types. Um, basically, there's computer-based. That's the one you're going to take there at MEPS, another acronym for you guys. So uh, you got that one, and then you've got a paper-based, which you're, you probably will take at the recruiter's office when you go in, or if you're in high school, around your junior, senior year, you're going to start looking at taking those. And you'll know because all the recruiters will come, at least in my high school, they would come and stand outside the library and pass out a whole bunch of stuff, that like with pencils and little foamy airplanes or footballs and other stuff that we could get in trouble with and go to detention with during class. The teachers really didn't like, so... They would come pass that stuff out and then tell us to go take the ASVAB test. We're all thinking, well, if you take the ASVAB test, you're going to go in the military. Not really. It just gives you an assessment and the military an assessment, just a reference. So it doesn't mean you're going to go in the military if you take it in high school. It's a good thing. That's what my buddy Jason ended up doing, and he ended up going to the military prior to 9-11. Yeah, it was a cool thing. All right, so what's it cover? There's nine subsections that you test on, and they're all different things ranging from science to word knowledge to whatever. Look it up in the Google machine, figure it out, and know that there are just four of those sections that they take and they add them up and they equal an Armed Forces Qualifying Test Score. Here's another acronym for you. AFQT score. So you get that, it's like an average of all the subsections that you do and those four specific subsections that you look at. In the Air Force, they take, obviously they take the four scores uh, that are there that make up the AFQT and they give you that average. Specifically for the Air Force, the Air Force takes the nine subsections and they add up different ones in a different order and they come up with their own four subsections that they use to put you in a job. And the four subsections are mechanical, administrative, general, or electrical. And if you ever hear somebody saying, well I just went in open general, it means there are jobs that qualified as general jobs or jobs that qualify as administrative jobs. Open administrative or open general means you can go into any one of those jobs. You're just kind of in like in a holding pattern of whatever pops up next as opposed to going into a specific job. Like security forces is a specific job, but a lot of people go into security forces because they were in open general. Security forces falls under the general category. So. Keep that in mind. That's just one way that they use those scores to put you in job. And they change from year to year based upon the needs of the Air Force. Based on how well you do in not just the AFQT, 
but in each subsection within the Air Force, that tells you what you're qualified for. For instance, when I took the ASVAB, which I'll go into a little bit more in a minute, I scored like a 99, 99, 97, and 96, or a total AFQT of 96. They took that and they said, hey, you got a 96? I look at all the, the jobs that, that I can qualify for with a 96 AFQT. And then from there, they look and say, okay, you made a 96 in electrics. Okay, what all jobs can you do that require 96 in electrics? So they just chose them. I, the one I happened to choose was 1Alpha 3, 1A3XX, if you're looking it up online. It's an airborne mission system specialist. Really cool job. Required a lot of mechanical and a lot of electronics knowledge. So, and I can thank Radio Shack for that because they had questions and I had answers and I worked there for a couple of years. So I really enjoyed that job. So, hoorah. That's not a, that's not me promoting it, Radio Shack, but I love you, Radio Shack. Retesting. What happens if you don't get a high enough score that you like or you just want to redo it? Well, after your initial test, one that the Air Force or the Armed Services gives you, high school, by the way, does not count as an initial test, but once you get um, your first initial test out of the way, 30 days later, you can retest. If you don't like the scores from that one, then you have to wait six months before you can retest. And an important thing about it is they don't ever pull your highest scores. They just go with the latest scores that you've done. So if you got a 96 on your first one, and then you go retest it and you made a 72 AFQT. Well, brother, you just kind of shot yourself in the foot because now you got a 72 that you're working with instead of the original score of 96. And one big thing that you should know is that you can wait. You don't have to sign something right then. You can take your test and they may pressure you and they may say, you got to do this now or you're not going to be in for whatever. You can wait. You've not signed papers. You can wait. If you want to wait 30 days to try to do it again to have a better score, then wait. It's all up to you, okay? You make of your career what you want to make of it. Nobody else is looking out for your career, just you, all right? All right, so I'll tell you a little bit about my personal ASVAB story here. Me being Southern guy from the good part of Texas, East Texas, deep East Texas, actually, down around Nacogdoches, Ashley may say something different, but whatever, don't listen to her. She's from West Texas. Well, it's the boring part of Texas. The real good part of Texas is East Texas. Trust me on that one, I'm from East Texas. I turned out okay. Anyway, Nacogdoches went to see my recruiter. He chit-chatted with me. I just said, man, let's do this thing. I didn't take any pre-tests or anything with him. I didn't take the paper test. I just began studying. I just got on several places. You can go online and find study places. You can go to the library, which by the way, is a place that just has lots and lots of books. There's probably one in your hometown. You can check it out. It's a really good source of information. So check out your library. Anyway, you can go in there, the reference section, find, I found a whole bunch of books. I would just go through and start taking the, the practice tests in there. It gives you the examples of the questions and it has like basically a real test in it. Like I had my wife time me. I did all the questions and then the back of the book has all the answers. So you can kind of find out how you did a little bit. But anyway, I just studied and studied and studied um, because it's something that I want to do. Again, I worked at Radio Shack at the time. So I had a lot of electronics background and a lot of mechanical background. So that was really good. Anyway, my recruiter made the appointment to do my ASVAB testing. Day came, showed up at the recruiter's office. He was decked out in his like cool little khakis and polo shirt said United States Air Force on it that they don't really pass out. You usually gotta go buy it because, because it looks cool. He had his hair all nice and neat and the sunglasses like what no thing. So anyway, we got his government issued Ford Taurus. Well, we showed up at the processing station there in Shreveport. Got out, went inside, told to sit down and be quiet. So sat down and be quiet for a little bit. Then they herded me and a whole bunch of other people into a room, a bunch of computers. Basically gave us the rundown, don't look at anybody else's stuff, don't talk about this, just take your test. And then afterwards, you're gonna be printed off a piece of paper. It's gonna give you a score and you take it back to your recruiter. So at this point, took my test, feeling like, uh, I don't know what I did on it. So, and, I, and you'll find that with most of your tests in the Air Force, <laughs> at least I do anyway. It's just like, uh, I don't even know what, was that even the same test that I studied for? Took it, dude behind the glass partition that was watching us, like, motioned me to go in there. So I went in there and he gave me my little piece of paper, it's all folded up, and I'm like nervous. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna like get like 50 or 40, I'm just, I'm expecting, I'm like, just please at least let me get a 70. So I opened the paper up, 99, 99, 97, 96, total of 96. I'm like, yes, awesome. So at this point, my recruiter had gone to like go get something to eat or something. So he just left me there. So boop, 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 dialed my little cell phone, my little flip phone at that point. Hey man, hey, I'm done. Guess what I got? 
No, I didn't get a 69. No, I got a 96, brother. Come come pick me up. Let's go. So he came and picked me up. Either way, that's that's how it went for me. Basically showed up after he made the appointment, went down, did the thing, got the numbers, called him up, went home, told my wife. She was like, yay, what does that mean? It means I did a good job. So I could get any pick of the Air Force jobs almost that I want. So luckily I picked uh, one Alpha 3, which is the one I went with. Now I've cross-trained into a one Alpha Zero, which is a error refueling technician or fancy way of saying boom operator. I love the job, love both jobs. Always highly, highly encourage everybody to do an error air job, some sort of flying job. It's a whole different spin on the United States Air Force. So, you know, that's my story there. Uh, yeah, just study hard. If it's something you want to do, study hard. Find out what you want to do. Look it up on the computer or in that place I talked about, the library. Go there, find what you want. Look through the jobs. Airforce.com, about.com, military, Air Force jobs, AFSC. Look that look that one up if you want to go in the Air Force. But just find out what you want to do. Find out what the requirements are and study. Study the things that you are weak in. Because again, those those more difficult questions are worth more points. So if this is something that you want to do and it's something you really are passionate about, study for it. And even if you're not passionate about it, if you study for it, worst you can do is make a great score and then you can go do something else and not even deal with the military. So.